We have you covered on this edition of City Span. Straight ahead, we'll shine the bright lights on a program to eliminate blight and spice up local neighborhoods. Downtown is closing in on a major facelift, beautification to Broughton, Bay, and River Streets just around the corner. An update on the split of SCMPD and news and notes from Savannah Fire. We'll finish up our season of going bananas and some inspiration from a strawberry. From the arch to the pond, we'll do our best to organize it all up for you. Six Span is straight ahead right here on SGT. Welcome to City Span. Ken Slats here bringing you all the in depth news and information in and about the city of Savannah. We're going to start with some bright, shiny news. Literally, in August, the city launched its Savannah Shines Initiative, a program that partners with our neighborhoods investing in their future, moving Savannah forward. The city's first partner neighborhood, Edgemere Sackville, a neighborhood of some 1,200 residents, nestled south of East 52nd Street between Waters Avenue and the Truman Parkway. Our Michelle Gavin has more. One, two, three. <laughs> Mayor Eddie Deloach, Alderman John Hall, City Manager Rob Hernandez, and other members of the city's Savannah Shines team, along with Edgemere Sackville residents, broke ground on a new playground. It's just one of the many great things that will be happening in this neighborhood over the next 18 to 24 months been a long time, but a change is about to come. The city held a kickoff event on August 11th for the new Savannah Shines Thank Initiative. You, Dozens of people from the neighborhood turned out, including Neighborhood Association President Cynthia Hobson. I feel like Edgemere and Sackville have won the lottery. Savannah Shines is a multifaceted, coordinated approach to neighborhood revitalization and will address four areas, private property, public property, public safety, and community engagement. The goal, help clean up this neighborhood, but do so by educating the residents and property owners about city programs and financial assistance that is available so they can sustain the improvements. If a neighborhood looks bad, Savannah looks bad, the government looks bad, so let's make sure that we take care of all the neighborhoods. Choosing Edgemere Sackville as the first Savannah Shines neighborhood didn't happen by chance. The city used its Sunshine Index, which uses specific criteria to rate Savannah's neighborhood. That criteria included an established neighborhood association, the number of housing code violations, property code violations, delinquent property taxes, and crime data. Now that the city has kicked off the program and identified the neighborhood, it's time to get to work. Staff members have already been working with residents in Edgemere Sackville to identify what work needs to be done. Uh, the blight, obviously, is the number one thing. Uh, the crime. Police and code enforcement officers are becoming familiar faces in the neighborhood. Teams will work to improve lighting and rid the neighborhood of litter, trash, boarded up homes, and illegal parking. Other teams will work to improve the conditions of many of the homes. The first thing that hit me as I drove through the neighborhood and walked through it as we began this process was that this neighborhood could use a good haircut. Uh, the tree canopy on private property largely is so out of control. Martin Freddy is the city's housing director and the team leader for Savannah Shines. Uh, it's dropping needles, limbs uh, on roofs, which isn't good for the roofs. Uh, it's so dense that it doesn't allow light or ventilation through, so you start getting mildew and mold on the exteriors of properties. The plan, partner with landlords, property owners, and private companies to make things like tree pruning affordable. Also on the short list, sidewalks, just infrastructure that we've needed in this community for a long time. Right now there are no sidewalks on East 53rd Street between Live Oak and Waters Avenue, a block that sees a lot of foot traffic. And curb cuts that were put in years ago need to be made into driveways. They just drive and park in the front yard and they're sometimes parking multiple vehicles in the front yard. That means the grass can't grow and that leads to erosion. The city hopes the property owners will clean up their act voluntarily. If not, the city will get tough. And that's an approach many residents applaud. Everything that's coming is a positive, and it'll improve their lives and everyone else's. Shining a light on the great things that can happen when the city and community work together. This is a great day for Savannah. Reporting for SGTV, I'm Michelle Gavin. 
Thank you, Michelle. Once the city wraps up work in Edgemere, Sackville, in the next year and a half or so, a new Savannah Shines neighborhood will be announced. All right, let's take you back to June of 1977. River Street was unveiled as a grand strip along the Savannah River. It brought life back to what was once a bustling area in the early 1800s. Now the city is gearing up to make it even better, but River Street is just a third of the streets getting a makeover. It's part of the Downtown Streetscape Project. Savannah River landed on the east, and then you could take Canal District on the west. You take all these things and you know, five years, ten years from now, it's just going to be wow. To many, the downtown historic district already has the wow factor. Add the $14 million streetscape project and the flow from Broughton Street north to the river ties the city together. So there's continuity um, within the context of our downtown. You're not walking from one distinct area to another. Um, it'll be blended and you'll get the full Savannah experience. I feel like it's going to be more of a, it's going to be a warmer feeling in there that uh, we don't necessarily have in a lot of areas there now. I think River Street is fantastic. Some of the, the ideas that have come out for Rosacas Plaza and really energizing the area, making it more um, family friendly um, is something definitely that's a, a win for, for River Street. The key thing is making sure there are access points that are um, ADA accessible for individuals to actually get to River Street. Um, and get to the core historic district from River Street. And I think that's something that the consultants looked at and, and came up with some good strategies on. Of course, on top of the hill is Bay Street, downtown's busiest east-west traffic route. I think the main thing is, is looking long-term and developing a more long-term solution where we're reducing the amount of truck traffic as well as the amount of vehicular traffic that's on Bay Street. The way it looks to me now, uh, and the design they have, it's going to restrict it to uh, to the point that maybe you know it might be easier to go another way. I know it will slow down and quite you know a lot as far as the traffic is concerned. Slow down the traffic and make it easier for people to uh, cross the roads. And then there's Broughton Street, home to quaint retail stores, a shopping destination with world class brands. It's always been my drive to make sure that Broughton Street looked like th that should be the center of all of the southeast. There's, there's not another community except Savannah. And it should be where Statesboro wants to ride down here and come and shop here in Savannah on the, on our, what I call our boardwalk. Well, I think, you know, in looking at downtowns across the country as well as in Savannah, um, special events in the core historic district um, are, are very popular. And I think the more we can build the infrastructure to support those types of activities, the better off we're going to be as far as a competitive downtown. And I think with the plans for Broughton Street and with between Whitaker and Drayton Street provide that. The project will go out to bidding very soon and then phase one construction will begin right after St. Patrick's Day 2018. Sure, beautification of this gem of a city is certainly a big part of the city's strategic initiative. The full study wrapping up after council approval six months ago. It's called Savannah Forward. Jeremy Stevens from Managing Results worked with city staff since the project began. Its purpose is to have measurable results in a handful of key initiatives looking towards five to ten and even fifteen years into the future. Strategic Initiatives Manager Liz Tashiro presented the full findings to Council. So Savannah, an extraordinary place to live, learn and prosper is the, the vision for our city. And then the mission is of the City of Savannah is to provide exceptional public services to residents, businesses and guests so they may experience a safe, healthy and thriving community. This is really a change of direction. It's a, it's a completely different way of uh, interacting with our citizens. It's a completely different way of getting things done. Uh, it's not broken up into different bureaus. It's, it's one, one, your purpose is safety, your purpose is this, and it breaks it up into four or five angles and that person, his sole responsibility or her sole responsibility is to make that happen. So people will be more accountable for what they're doing. As part of the strategic plan, the Arena Canal District is one of the top priorities. So much so, it's getting a dedicated staff of two to three individuals to help lead the way. City Manager Rob Hernandez says this is the biggest public project for the next 15 years. Financially, in the hundreds of millions of dollars, this will expand the downtown core of the city. It is transformational in terms of our development and our continued uh, maturation into a, a leading world-class city. There's a lot of work that, that needs to be done there and we are now at the point where we need to put a team of professionals here within the city whose sole job is going to be focused on 
bringing the, the arena to fruition and continuing on with the redevelopment projects that are in the arena development districts. The Arena Canal District leadership is one of the new branches of the City of Savannah's government. Last month, City Council approved a full reorganization, and it's in line with the strategic plan, that full story, and how it affects you in about 13 minutes on CitySpan. I'd like to make a motion to approve a resolution adopting a living wage pay provision for the City of Savannah employees. Okay. I got a motion. I got a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Earlier this summer, Savannah City Council passed a resolution adopting a living wage for all city employees effective January 1st of 2018. That wage is based on a nationally recognized tool developed by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, and is based on community costs like health care, food, and housing. The goal? The living wage is an hourly rate of pay intended to provide an individual with a decent standard of living. While no city employee falls below the living wage, city officials hope to set an example for other employers in the community, as well as demonstrate the city's commitment to its own employees. The living wage policy sets an example to the community at large to be committed to their employees, like the city of Savannah is to ours, to assure that they have enough pay to allow them to be mobile within our economy. I hope that it shows to current and potential city of Savannah employees the dedication that the organization has to assuring that their amount of pay covers a decent standard of living, provides enough money to provide them a, a, decent, a decent living. Georgia state law prevents municipalities from dictating a living wage for the private sector. So the policy only affects City of Savannah employees. The wage will be recalculated on an annual basis using the MIT formula. All right, straight ahead after the break, more easy online access to City of Savannah resources. It's called Open Neighborhoods, why it's important to you. And Mayor Deloach tells us what we need to know as the city works on the split of Savannah Chatham County's police department and the plans ahead. We'll have that next on City Span. Smart people agree, litter is stupid. It is dirty. It's filthy. They can blow away and they can make a big mess. It might get washed into the ocean. You just put it in the garbage truck. Put it in the trash can! Right here. Litter makes your neighborhood trashy. Littering is against the law. Litter is stupid. It drives me stupid. It's stupid! Welcome back to City Span. Remember, check us out online, savannahga.gov, and we're also on Facebook and Twitter. It has been 12 years since there was a Savannah Police Department. Since then, it's been a city-county partnership that'll remain in place until February. That's when it's expected to return to just a Savannah Police Department. That decision handed down by council on the last day of May, which was weeks after the release of the city and county initiated third party report. The Berkshire report was completed in April so that we could finalize the county's share priority so they could adopt their own budget. And since the county has not responded, we are forced to take a vote this morning to end the police merger. Hearing none, it carries unanimously. I feel like the long term effects will be an improved police force for the community. I know it'll be improved just, just by the numbers and the uh, uh, the ability to interact with the community has just got to make a huge difference. The major part of the Berkshire report, highlighted by the mayor, is the seven minute response time for priority one calls. That study works well for us. I mean, it works well for anybody that wants to use it because it, it outlined, you know, there's more than just how many people you got out on patrol. It's the departments and how they're set up. It's the way you've got your uh, police force set up as far as sergeants, majors, uh, lieutenants and, and, and captains and, and on up the line. The process of splitting is well underway. The council expects a smooth transition. The assets are were in place, some of the things we have built since then, but in reality it belonged to either the city or the county. So it's pretty well split where we have uh, three precincts and ones we need in our in our area. We have those and we have, a, we have some already in place. 
February 1st is the target date for the completion of the split and the restart of the Savannah Police Department. We're going to come out today and just update you on some of the things that, that's going on departmentally. Savannah Fire Chief Charles Middleton making his quarterly personal visit to Station 2 at Tibet and White Bluff. It's a practice the chief believes is important in building a rapport with his nearly 350 firefighters across the city. He makes his stops at all 15 stations. Under Chief Middleton's leadership, Savannah Fire and Emergency Services has done its part to help Savannah gain an ISO 1 rating. Only one of four in the state with ISO 1 and accredited. In order to know what's going on, you, you got to get out. And you got to, people have to be comfortable talking to you. There's just something good about being in a fire station, going and talking to people in their own environment, allowing them to, to talk directly to you. So, because we're, you know, we're a pretty rigid chain of command organization. So this, this informal discussion, I think it helps overall. The city is certainly making it easier for you to find information at your fingertips. Last month, we rolled out our Capital Improvement Projects website. This month, it's all about open neighborhoods. A site like this allows the individual to get the answers that they need and to find out where resources are. Which is directly what Open Neighborhoods was designed to do. A true community engagement platform designed by the city and the Savannah Area Geographic Information System, or SAGES. It asks you for your address first thing, so even if you're not familiar with maps, um, you have this this website that's asking you for your address. So you're going to put in your address and it's going to immediately return information that's going to be relevant to you. I think the ability for individuals to have an immediate response. I think as a, as a resident of Savannah myself and as a city employee, we understand both sides of the spectrum and, and sometimes it's hard to be, be there to answer every call. Like calls for information on your neighborhood organization or your local alderman. You can even find information on public parks, schools, cat bus stops, and so much more. I think being able to see what resources are out there and being able to allow the user to make those choices is wonderful. I think it's a really great way to connect people with other people in their neighborhood who may not necessarily know who to go to to start that process. Again, it's very simple. Head on over to savannahga.gov. The second tab on top is community and the very first line is open neighborhoods. Just follow along where the information is endless. Speaking of neighborhoods, very busy time at Filer Terrace, Can, Jackson Park, and Summerside. You ever heard of the song, Signs, Signs, Everywhere a Sign? Well, we have it for you. A trifecta of neighborhood joy. Brand new signs are now up in the 5th District. Alderwoman Dr. Estella Shabazz serving as Master of Ceremony. Each of the neighborhoods in her district. She invited Alderman Van Johnson along to Filer Terrace since the neighborhood revitalization began when it was part of his district. Yes, these are just signs, but they mean a whole lot more to the residents living there. The pride, even this morning as we all felt the pride from the residents. These signs are a new beginnings for one of the five priorities of the city of Savannah City Council priorities and that is neighborhood revitalization. Hurricane season is upon us and just like it's important to secure your home and property should an evacuation become necessary, taking care of your finances ahead of time can help you weather the storm. Here's our friend Richard Reeve with more. September is National Preparedness Month. Emergency agencies encourage you to prepare for emergencies in your homes, businesses, and communities. Having your finances prepared can make any emergency less stressful. Here are a few financial tips to prepare you for a natural disaster. Have an account dedicated to saving money for a natural disaster. The amount of savings will depend on your family size. Less than half of Americans have a household emergency plan. If you don't have any savings, start with a small amount, such as $5 or $10 from each paycheck until you reach your goal. Separate these funds into an account dedicated to an emergency situation. Have your important documents in one place, including financial documents. This would include your bank routing numbers, income tax information, pay stubs, car registrations, titles, deeds, and other similar documents. SEMA, or the Chatham Emergency Management Agency, 
has a list on their website along with planning tips. There are also some alternative ways to keep this information safe. There are reliable apps and software that allow you to keep these documents protected online. Take photos of your house, including exterior and interior photos. Make sure to include rooms and personal items in the photos. Including the make, model, and year of your belongings will ensure you'll receive the correct compensation. In the event of a disaster, prepare to take cash. Have a small amount in a safe place at all times. During a natural disaster, it may be difficult to use credit or debit cards and not possible to use ATMs. Because September is National Preparedness Month, take some time to prepare for a natural disaster. Remember these tips and plan ahead. Until next time, I'm Richard Reeve, and you can bank on this. And thank you, Richard. One more time to step away. On the flip side, we'll go bananas, literally. Another fabulous, fan-friendly season in the books for our beloved baseball team at Historic Grayson Stadium. And it's only getting better. But straight ahead, the city is reorganizing efficiency and customer service taking center stage. City Manager Rob Hernandez will explain. The City Span comes back after the break. collection that I've entitled Native Blooms. They're all people who are residents of Savannah, not necessarily born here, but I think that they speak to what Savannah is. They're the best part of what I think Savannah is. That picture is called Savannah Anna, and it's actually a picture of Anna Miller and Frank Miller, both of who are transplants from South Carolina. And to me, it just shows the exuberance and excitement of St. Patrick's Day, but also all the different events that happen in Savannah. I would say I average about three months to get a large portrait done, but I work full time, and I can't say that I do it every weekend. This is actually my most favorite piece here. I know it's not a painting, but it's a sculpture that I did, again, through our city's cultural affairs department. Eight years ago, I ran across some gorgeous pictures that were taken back about 1913 of children that worked in the oyster factories along the southeast coast. Showed the conditions they lived in, worked in, their little fingers bandaged, and I just, it, it spoke to me and touched my heart. So I made one oyster shell out of ceramic and put three little girls, Josie, Bertha, and Rosie. Thought I was gonna be happy just making one, but then I decided, no, there were so many other children, um, I decided to make a dozen on the half shell. I'm absolutely thrilled to be given this opportunity. I understand this is just an opportunity of a lifetime. And thank you very much, Carol. Be sure to check out the paintings. Absolutely stunning work. I've seen them all myself. Did you know that the city's organizational structure, trickling down from several bureaus, was put into the city code back in 1977? That's 40 years of the same basic structure of our city government. It's time, it's long overdue, that we revisit how we're organized. And so this reorganization that we propose to City Council does exactly that. It turns us into a strategically aligned organization. Strategically aligned is the key phrase. The reorganization is in conjunction with the $103,000 study by the outside company managing results. Savannah Ford is the impetus for this reorganization. Um, this reorganization could not have taken place without Savannah Ford. We need to eliminate all of that organizational confusion that exists. 
um, because it doesn't provide good customer service for our residents. And, and I understand why we're organized that way because it may have made sense for the organization, but it doesn't make sense for our customers. And ultimately, we have to put our customers first. An example would be enforcing the various codes and ordinances within the city, tasks that under the old organizational structure fell under many different departments. And we're going to centralize all of our regulatory or the majority of our regulatory enforcement activities into one new code compliance department. So that department will be responsible for the public nuisance violations, um, short, enforcing short-term vacation rentals, dealing with derelict vehicles, uh, noise, and this reorganization is going to make that aspect of what we do better. Which will have a positive impact across the entire city. For you as a, as a Savannian, you'll see uh, more responsive government and better customer service. What started as a crafty home hobby for one Savannah man will soon become a new business in Savannah's Starland District thanks in part to the Small Business Assistance Corporation. Leandra Michael has more on this month's Small Business Spotlight. This month we're featuring a business that is on its way to the Starland District. Two Tides Brewery focuses on small batch craft beers. It's the brainchild of Savannah native James Massey. Until recently, a business like this wasn't even possible here, but as they do, things change. And James knew exactly where to go for small business resources. A little bit about myself, you know, I'm a CPA in, in town, I'm actually with a firm that's right in, in this building behind us, and that's something I've practiced for a number of years now, but in the meantime, I've been a, a home brewer for around nine years, and this is going to transition from a, a home brewer to a professional scale, and um, we absolutely love the neighborhood that we chose, that was, it, we couldn't imagine it anywhere else. Um, we think that's just a very up-and-coming, art-friendly uh, neighborhood that, is, that would be key to our, our business's success. So what's making this all really possible from you know, transferring from a dream to a reality was Senate Bill 85. And that recently got signed by Governor Deal, and that is going to allow us to, under a certain limit, sell pints out of the tap room. So that's what's you know, turn this from a, from a dream into a reality. You know, we never, I never really thought that this law was going to change, so this whole time I haven't been planning to open a brewery. You know, that's really been in the past um, six months and that we first got wind that, okay, this, the distributors are working with lawmakers. Um, there doesn't seem to be much pushback on this. This has a legitimate shot of going through, allowing us to sell pints, and that's when the wheels really started turning into making this a reality this really wouldn't be possible without the SBAC. Um, as you know, a lot of lending agencies aren't very comfortable lending to startup businesses. Um, so the SBAC was, and I, I, would, I would say I owe my business to them. They are a pleasure to work with, and I have had no troubles. Um, it's, it hasn't been overbearing of a process. It's, it's, um, it's been very, very convenient and pleasurable. If owning a small business is in your plan, you should visit the Small Business Resource Center at 111 East Liberty Street, or check them out online, sbacsav.com. James's dream is becoming a reality. What are you dreaming about? I'm Leandria, and this is your SBAC Small Business Spotlight. See, the uniform for me was my escape. Baseball allowed me to escape. Former Major League Baseball star Daryl Strawberry in Savannah talking about his battle with drugs and alcohol during and after his 17-year career with the Yankees, the Mets, the Dodgers, and the Giants. Strawberry inspired hundreds of kids at the Trustees Theater, some of which were there as guests of the city of Savannah for taking part in the Summer 500 program. The Downtown Business Association allowed the city to partner up to let our area's high schoolers know the importance of summer work and education. The Summer 500 is setting the standard for the future. So it's our opportunity to give our kids an early start to get the confidence they need and the direction they need that they can take and go the rest of their life. I think it's remarkable. I think it's remarkable that the community would come together like that. The business uh, people and the community would come together and, and empower the young people. And, and I think that's, 
That's a great statement of what America should be like. We have the ability to help young people and we need to reach out across the aisle to be able to say, you know, let's, let's help them, let's educate them, let's show them what it's like to be responsible. I'm just really proud of the fact that Savannah, Georgia has, has done this um, and maybe they could just be a prime example of what America should be like. More baseball news, 91,000 fans headed to historic Grayson Stadium to see the brand new Savannah Bananas team in 2016. More than 115,000 fans came this year. So what's next for the new Potassium Princes of Savannah? I really don't believe in the beginning any of us anticipated how wildly popular it was going to get and what was going to happen and what fun it was. It's been a two-year ride like none other. Captivating audiences with nonstop entertainment and college baseball. It's exciting for us because we want to give people this incredible experience. And I think part of that is the sold out atmosphere and the sold out experience and coming to a game where there's thousands of people here because you feel like you're a part of something. You know, they want to feel like they're a part of something that's cool and fun and unique and different. That's right, 26 regular season games, each of them sold out. How hot are the tickets for 2018? Well, there are waiting lists totaling more than a thousand for the various season ticket plans. We want to make sure we can feed them properly. They have plenty of restrooms. They can sit down. They can enjoy their experience here. So we'll we'll work on trying to add more individual, we call them neighborhoods around the ballpark that people can come out and enjoy with friends, coworkers, colleagues. As with everywhere else in Savannah, we have a parking problem, which Johnston admits is a good problem to have, but one that needs to be solved. Satellite parking and trolley people in or, or whatever so that um, as the program is continually successful, we can expand it. As we expand, you know, how do we preserve what is Daffin Park in that area is part of what makes it successful because people can drive there. It's not coming downtown. I think where it is is a good thing. I just think we have to figure out how to make that work for us. Once a solution is found, the city and baseball team's partnership can move on as smoothly as it started. 2018 is the final year of a three-year deal to play at Grayson Stadium. Beyond that, it's an option for the Bananas. We obviously have enjoyed our time here. The city's been great. The business community's been great. You know, the entire community has been great to us. We want to keep you know, that going long term as well. As with everything, I think, is this a shelf life? You know, did they have a shelf life for five years and then people get tired of it? And the product I'm seeing, I don't believe that would be the case. That'll do it for this edition of City Span. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Remember, check us out online, savannahga.gov. We have tons of information at your fingertips. And of course, we're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have a story ID in Savannah, please do let us know. As we head out of here, check out the Mallard Ducks at Tribble Park on Savannah's south side in Windsor Forest neighborhood. The city released 35 Mallard Ducks to add to the beauty of this Savannah park. For all of us at SGTV, thanks for watching. And thanks for making Savannah your home.